if we look at the reasons for why we suffer, our very own thoughts seems to be one of the primary causes. But I want to suggest to you that it's not necessarily the thoughts in of themselves that cause us suffering. And it's not even the case that bad thoughts, so to say, cause us suffering. It is rather that we have, in a sense, misplaced our thoughts. We are not giving them the breathing room they need, so to say. We think that they happen somewhere where they don't actually happen. We assume that they happen in our head, so to say. And this is actually reinforced by the way we use language. We use terms like I need to clear my head or my head is so full of thoughts. And that seems to suggest that thoughts in a very real experiential way seem to take place in our head. But that's an assumption we can actually look at and question and investigate. So this won't even take much time at all. All you need to do is honestly look at your own experience. The conclusions of looking at our experience this way can be quite surprising and they can have a profound effect on how our experience seems to us. And that in effect has a huge impact on the degree to which we suffer. So where do our thoughts take place, first of all? It's best if we close our eyes for a bit, even though it's not absolutely necessary to do so. But for most people, it will be easier to focus on the realm of thinking if we are actually just closing our eyes for a bit. So let's do that together. And you don't need to do anything special. Just be somewhat relaxed and uh, receptive and just follow my instructions here. So just think any thought. Any thought you would like. You can choose, for example, the thoughts, this is a thought. Just repeat that a couple of times. Now, ask yourself, where is this thought taking place? The important thing here is to not come to an intellectual conclusion about it. Refer only to your experience. In your experience, where is this thought taking place? Again, the common sense answer for a lot of us is, well, in my head, of course. But what do you know right now of having a head? The head right now consists of these sensations, these subtle feelings, maybe even a strong feeling, if you're having a headache, for example. But Nevertheless, do your thoughts appear in any of these sensations? So think this thought again. And just notice where it appears. Isn't it the case that it just appears in what exactly what I can't really say you can describe it as a kind of space in which it appears it seems to be open and alive And this alive openness in which the thought is appearing 
Can you find any boundaries to it? Can you find some kind of edge where this openness in which the thought appears is ending? Genuinely look for it. Don't have any pre-made conclusions. Isn't this openness unlimited in a sense? Because we can't find any limit to it. And what I know of having a head is also just a sensation appearing in this alive openness. So this openness just seems to take the shape of thinking and sensations. Now open your eyes again. Just get a bit accustomed to seeing again. And let's leave thoughts behind for a moment. We will get back to the original question, but just take a look at the experience of seeing right now. So you can just look into the room for a bit, even though it's not absolutely necessary. You can also just keep looking at the video if you want. But um, what I want you to do now is to just have a relaxed view into the room. Relax your eyes, relax this gaze into the room and allow awareness to expand so that you don't just become aware of what's directly in front of you, but also of the whole periphery of what you're seeing. And so just keep this relaxed panoramic view of the scene in front of you. Of course, it seems like there are many different objects in your visual field right now, but we can notice that all we know of the visual field is just the experience of seeing. Of course, we can differentiate these objects. They seem to be very easily distinguishable, usually. But the totality of this visual experience is just seeing. And just like we explored where thoughts are taking place, let's right now explore where seeing is taking place. So something you can notice here is that your visual field actually has no distinct boundary. You can even use your hands in order to kind of trace the outlines of your visual field. And what you notice is that the visual field kind of just gets more blurry and blurry and fades out, right? But this line where things start to disappear, where your hands start to disappear now, is not easily distinguishable, right? It's just a gradual fading out. And this is the entirety of the experience of seeing right now. Now ask yourself, where is this experience of seeing taking place? Where is this experience of seeing appearing? Usually we have this idea that we're looking out at the world. But if we just explore our experience, we see that all we know of a seeming world is seeing. The seeing is, of course, not lost. Clearly, there's an awareness of it. But where is it appearing? Again, is this seeing appearing within a head? We looked earlier at the fact that all we know of having a head are these sensations and you can see a bit of your face, right? But is the seeing appearing 
in the sensations of your head. Obviously not. But where is it appearing? Again, you can't really say, right? It just seems to appear here in this alive openness. It's not a really distinguishable place. All we can say is that seeing is here, is being known. But where is it being known? This placeless place, which you can't really define, is of course not some kind of void. It's clearly alive. And can you find any limits to this alive openness in which seeing is appearing right now? Again, in your own experience, look for it. Look for this limit to this openness in which seeing is taking place. Now here is the crucial part. How does all of this free our thoughts? Because that was the initial question, of course. Now we notice that our thoughts seem to take place in this unidentifiable openness. And just like our thoughts, our seeing was taking place in an unidentifiable openness. So we seemingly have these two spaces where thinking was taking place and where seeing was taking place. But where is the dividing line? Where is the boundary that separates the place where thinking is appearing from the place where seeing is appearing? Again, check your experience and try to find this boundary. Can you find any boundary there? I certainly can't. Both seeing and thinking is just appearing right now in a place that has no coordinates. There is just this openness which is taking the form of seeing and thinking. And we usually feel like our thoughts are somehow happening internally of us and seeing is something that is outside of us because we are seeing a world that is outside of ourselves. But isn't it in your actual experience the case that thoughts are appearing in the same openness? And when we see this naturally, the thoughts are free. They are free floating, so to say, in this experience, in this openness, indistinguishable from the space of the visual fields. And so if we shift seemingly to this way of experiencing the world, if we check this belief of thoughts happening in the head and see that it's not actually true in our experience, then there is breathing room, there is this spaciousness, there is an inherent freedom in that realization. And as you saw, it's so easy to do. So just enjoy it. That's really all there is to it.